Elon Musk just admitted what destroyed Starship's Mars mission, a single wrong part. Ship 36 exploded with such force that steel chunks flew into the Rio Grande River. The insider truth? SpaceX installed a lower-rated pressure vessel instead of the correct one. One paperwork error, one catastrophic failure. Mars Chuga 100 Yugosex? Forget it, the Massey site looks like a war zone. Cleanup takes six to eight weeks minimum. But here's the real question. How does the world's most advanced rocket company make such a basic mistake? The answer will shock you. Let's dive right in. The investigation that changed everything. Our exclusive sources inside SpaceX just revealed something that should terrify anyone who cares about space exploration. The explosion wasn't random. It wasn't bad luck. It was completely preventable. Here's what happened in those final seconds before Ship 36 became a fireball. The static fire test was proceeding normally. Engines weren't even firing yet. Then, without warning, the composite overwrapped pressure vessel failed catastrophically. But why would a pressure vessel, designed to handle extreme forces, suddenly give up? The answer lies in a shocking discovery that SpaceX engineers are still grappling with. The paperwork showed that technicians had scanned and logged the correct COPV as installed. Every box was checked. Every protocol followed. But the actual hardware told a different story. The fatal mix-up, think of a COPV like the heart of Starship's life support system. It's a carbon fiber tank wrapped around a metal liner, designed to store gases at incredibly high pressures. These aren't off-the-shelf parts. Each one is engineered for specific pressure ratings specific applications, specific missions to Mars. Now here's where it gets absolutely terrifying. Our source suggests that while the documentation showed the correct high pressure COPV was installed, a lower rated version may have actually been used instead. Picture building a dam designed to hold back a massive reservoir, but someone accidentally uses concrete rated for a small pond. What happens when the real pressure hits? The math is brutal. If Ship 36 was loaded with a COPV rated for 300 PSI when it needed one rated for 500 PSI, failure was inevitable. The question isn't if it would explode, it's when. And that when happened to be during one of the most critical tests in Starship's development. But here's what's keeping SpaceX engineers awake at night. How does this kind of mix-up happen at the world's most advanced rocket company? The process that failed SpaceX has built its reputation on precision. Every bolt, every wire, every component is tracked from manufacturing to installation. Their quality control systems are legendary. So how did a wrong part make it through multiple checkpoints? The implications are staggering. If this was indeed a process failure, not a design flaw, it means the same mistake could happen again. Tomorrow, next week, on the next Mars mission. Our source painted a picture of the investigation that's both thorough and terrifying. Teams are going through every step of Ship 36's assembly. Every scan, every signature, every moment that COPV changed hands. Because if they can't figure out how this happened, Mars isn't just delayed, it's in serious jeopardy. The explosion that defied physics. The force of Ship 36's explosion defied everyone's expectations. COPVs are supposed to be among the most robust components in a rocket. They're designed to contain incredible pressures, to survive the violence of launch, to operate in the vacuum of space. When one fail, it fails spectacularly. Stainless steel chunks, some weighing hundreds of pounds, were hurled like shrapnel across the test site. Pieces landed in the Rio Grande River, hundreds of meters away. The explosion was so violent that it resembled a military ordnance test more than a rocket failure. The methane ground support equipment, vital for fueling operations, was obliterated. Liquid oxygen tanks, built to withstand extreme conditions, were damaged beyond repair. The site looked like a war zone. But here's the detail that should worry everyone. The explosion happened before the engines even fired. This wasn't a Raptor failure or a fuel mixing problem. This was a fundamental system giving up under normal pretest conditions. If Starship can't survive preparation, how can it survive Mars? 
Jordan's helicopter footage from the cleanup operation tells a story that SpaceX doesn't want you to see. The organized debris fields aren't just cleanup. They're crime scenes. Every piece of twisted metal is evidence of what went wrong. The larger chunks of Ship 36 have been carefully collected and organized into taped-off areas. But why the tape? Why the careful organization? Because SpaceX needs to reconstruct the explosion like investigators reconstruct a plane crash. Every fragment tells part of the story. The destroyed methane condensers remain untouched. Weeks after the explosion, this isn't neglect. It's preservation. These systems were closest to the failure point. They hold the most crucial evidence. But evidence of what exactly? Our sources suggest that the investigation team is paying particular attention to the installation records versus the physical evidence. They're looking for discrepancies, gaps, moments where human error could have slipped through their systems. And what they're finding is deeply disturbing. The timeline that crumbled Elon Musk promised Mars missions by 2026. That timeline just became fiction. The Massey site rebuild will take six to eight weeks minimum, and that's assuming they figure out what went wrong immediately. But here's the deeper problem. If this was a process failure, how many other starships have similar issues? Ships 37 and 38 are nearly complete. Are they safe? How about the dozens of starships in various stages of production? Does SpaceX need to inspect every single one? The math is unforgiving. Every week of delay pushes Mars missions further into the future. Launch windows to Mars only open every 26 months. Miss 2026, and you're looking at 2028. Miss 2028, and must Mars colony dreams start looking like science fiction? The desperate alternatives with Massey down. SpaceX is reportedly considering alternative test methods. But what does alternative mean for a company that's already pushing the boundaries of rocket science? Our sources hint at temporary setups that might look unconventional. Instead of the sophisticated Massey facility, SpaceX might be forced to conduct critical tests at makeshift locations. The flame trench at Starbase remains operational. But is it sufficient for the advanced testing Starship requires? Here's the terrifying question. If SpaceX rushes to alternative testing methods to save their Mars timeline, are they increasing the risk of another catastrophic failure? Or are they accepting that the current approach is too risky to continue? While Massey burns, something interesting appeared at Starbase, a water-cooled flame bucket top ridge piece. This isn't coincidence. It's preparation. But preparation for what? This hardware is designed for the most violent forces in rocketry. The combined exhaust of 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. The checkered surface holds embedded cooling channels, built to absorb heat that would melt most materials. But here's the puzzle. This part could be destined for Florida's Starship pad, or it could be the first piece of a major Starbase upgrade. If it's for Starbase, it suggests SpaceX is planning significant changes to their original launch mount. Changes that might be directly related to what they learned from the Ship 36 explosion. The timing raises uncomfortable questions. Was this part already in production before the explosion, or is it a direct response to what happened at Massey? If it's a response, what does that tell us about SpaceX's confidence in their current testing infrastructure? The reality check from space, while SpaceX deals with earthbound explosions? The Vera C. Rubin Observatory just opened its eyes to the universe, and what it sees should humble anyone planning Mars missions. In just 10 hours of early observations, Rubin detected over 2,100 previously unknown asteroids. Seven of them are near-Earth objects, objects that could potentially threaten our planet. Objects we didn't even know existed until this week. Here's the sobering reality. If we can't even track all the rocks in our own neighborhood, how ready are we to send humans to another world? Rubin's discoveries highlight just how much we still don't know about space and how much we need reliable, tested spacecraft to explore it safely. The observatory's 3.2 gigapixel camera can image an area 40 times the size of the full moon in a single exposure. It will map over 20 billion galaxies in the next decade. That's billion with a B. Each galaxy containing hundreds of billions of stars. The scale is incomprehensible. And yet, 
SpaceX can't even get a pressure vessel installation right on Earth. Does this put Musk's Mars ambitions in perspective? The competition closing. And this isn't just about one exploded starship. It's about humanity's future as a spacefaring species. Every failure, every delay, every process breakdown pushes that future further away. Stokes Space is building their own fully reusable rocket at the same launch complex 14 where John Glenn made history. They're SpaceX's only real competition in the full reusability game. While SpaceX investigates explosions, Stoke is conducting successful engine tests and building launch infrastructure. They've completed over 53,000 seconds of hot fire testing. Their hardware is maturing quickly. What happens if Stoke succeeds while SpaceX struggles with quality control? What happens to the Mars timeline if SpaceX's main advantage, their head start, disappears? Amazon's Kuiper constellation is slowly coming together, providing real competition to Starlink for the first time. SpaceX's dominance isn't guaranteed. Every setback at Starbase gives competitors more time to catch up. The questions nobody wants to ask. Here's what SpaceX doesn't want you to ask. If they can make a mistake this basic on a test article, what about the spacecraft carrying astronauts? What about the starships destined for Mars missions with humans aboard? The COPV failure reveals something deeper than a simple part mix-up. It reveals potential cracks in SpaceX's quality assurance systems. Systems that will be responsible for keeping Mars colonists alive millions of miles from Earth. Can those systems be trusted? Can the processes that allowed a wrong part to reach a test stand be relied upon for missions where failure means death? These aren't comfortable questions. But they're the questions that need answers before any human steps aboard a Mars-bound starship. The uncomfortable truth. Every rocket company faces failures. That's the nature of pushing boundaries. But this failure is different. This failure wasn't about pushing boundaries. This was about getting the basics right. About making sure the right part goes in the right place. About quality control systems that should never, ever fail. If SpaceX can't trust their own installation procedures, how can they trust anything else? How can they guarantee that the life support systems will work on Mars? How can they promise that the heat shields will protect returning astronauts? One wrong part just revealed how fragile our entire space program really is. The investigation continues. The cleanup proceeds. Engineers work around the clock to understand what went wrong. But the damage to Mars timeline and to confidence in SpaceX's processes may already be done. Will 2026 see humans on Mars? Will 2028? Or will one simple mistake delay humanity's greatest adventure by decades? The answer lies in the twisted metal scattered across the Massey test site and in the processes that allowed this disaster to happen in the first place. The road ahead one wrong part changed everything. It exposed the fragile line between humanity's greatest dreams and our biggest failures. SpaceX will rebuild. They'll investigate. They'll improve their processes. But the question remains, will they rebuild trust as easily as they rebuild test stands? This story isn't over. Every week brings new developments, new discoveries, new challenges that could reshape our entire approach to Mars. We'll be watching every move tracking every decision, because the future of human spaceflight depends on getting this right. What do you think? Can SpaceX recover from this setback and still reach Mars by 2028? Or has this single mistake delayed humanity's greatest adventure by decades? Drop your thoughts below, and if you want to stay ahead of every twist in this unfolding space drama, you know what to do. The next chapter of this story is already being written. And it might be even more shocking than what we've seen so far. SpaceX released new S36 wreckage photos, and something incredible happened. The explosion that destroyed Starship 36 actually revealed its hidden strength. Look at this. The nose cone survived blast forces stronger than reentry. The Starlink terminal? Still working. Catching points? Barely damaged with just one surface crack. But here's what nobody expected. This destruction taught SpaceX exactly how to build an unstoppable starship. 
What killed S-36 is now making the next ships virtually indestructible. So how does a catastrophic failure become the breakthrough that changes everything? Let's dive right in. The wreckage that defied physics. The photos hit SpaceX headquarters like a thunderbolt. Starship 36 was supposed to be obliterated, completely gone. The composite overwrapped pressure vessel explosion in the payload bay unleashed forces that could level buildings. Engineers braced themselves for total devastation, but what they saw changed everything. A massive chunk of the nose cone sat there in the wreckage field, twisted and scarred from the blast. Yet somehow, impossibly, critical systems were still intact. The Starlink terminal that should have been vaporized